All right, people, welcome back. I'm Dave, and this is Save America Vote, Tulsi Gabbard. You know, um, foreign policy matters, uh, and it matters so much that I decided to jump from the moving Trump train over to uh, being a Tulsi Gabbard supporter. And for those of you who are inherently progressive, you're probably freaked out by that. And, you know, do you know that this guy Dave used to like Trump and he's now a Tulsi supporter? And, you know, and someone's going to use that in an interview with all the other people that aren't supposed to like Tulsi Gabbard and it's going to be guilt by association. But I've recognized that if we don't get our foreign policy under control, meaning the stuff we're doing as I speak, as I talk and do this video, stuff in Venezuela going down. Joe Biden, by the way, has weighed in and says that we have to support Guaido. <laughs> and, and he's talking about all the suffering going on in Venezuela. <sighs> so Trump and Biden have the same position. Actually, Trump doesn't share this position, but he's been taken over. I'm going to cut Trump some slack. Or either Trump is just so detached from any sort of policy acumen, I don't know if that's the right word, that he just gave it over. Here, you guys, like I've been saying, and this is what I noticed, is that he's a delegator. Here, you do this. You'll take care of it. You'll do a great job. Biden, though, is a guy who's believed this his whole life and has had many uh, instances where he, you know, Iraq war. Yeah. You know, so um, he's Hillary Clinton 2.0, uh, but maybe even worse. I mean, Joe Biden in a room with uh, John Bolton, they'd agree on everything. It would be the speed at which they do what they want to do is really the question. Um, really scary stuff. So when you hear, and again, I'm transitioning to Bernie Sanders here, and please, Bernie people, don't get mad at me. When Bernie Sanders, and I know he has to do certain things to be a Democrat, but I'm starting to wonder if this is even a good idea. Yeah, you run within this party infrastructure and you've got a better chance. They're basically using the Donald Trump model. The problem is Donald Trump got tons of free publicity because he was Donald Trump. He used his celebrity and the fact that this guy who had no political experience and who is really crass and was a loose cannon and could say anything at any moment this was a gift to the media and it was a gift to Donald Trump as far as coverage. Bernie Sanders doesn't have that. Bernie's got volunteers, Bernie's got dedicated followers. So Bernie probably could have walked away from the Democratic Party and gone green or gone whatever, invent the Bernie Party. I don't know, just being independent. Hi, I'm an independent. I'm progressive on most things. I'm running for president. Get on the ballot. Start, you know, working on ballot access. But the whole, I guess, conventional wisdom is an independent can't win the presidency. I think that's BS. I think Ross Perot would have won the presidency uh, if the deep state didn't go after his family. And if we had a media that was serious about covering that, um, we may have uncovered the truth on it. Perot just walked away quietly. You know, he came back, campaigned a little bit, took a lot of votes away from probably George, George Bush Sr. and uh, ended up uh, giving Clinton, you know, a way or a path through. Um, I think a third party could win. You got to have everybody on board. You have to have the population voting. They have to hear you speak. With social media the way it is now, you can go around all of these um, propaganda news outlets. You can go right around them. Go to YouTube, go to wherever you need to go to, but you can go around them. And Bernie Sanders, when he gets up there and says, hey, 
Joe Biden, if he's the nominee, it's okay. And here's Joe Biden saying, Guaido, got to recognize Guaido. We got to do our unconstitutional regime change. And there's Tulsi Gabbard is in your rear view mirror at that point. Because you can hear her voice. You can, you, can, you can hear her saying, we need to stop doing regime change wars. Hands off Venezuela. By the way, these aren't just peace activists out there for the sake of promoting peace. All right. I know that stuff was big in the 60s and 70s, and a lot of people thought, you know, hey, these are just pacifists and they don't understand the realities of the world. Guess what? We've reached a point now where pacifism actually makes sense. All right. Now, I'm not advocating for um, no war for any reason. I'm looking at what we've done. And it's like we can't put the genie back in the bottle. We just keep going back and doing the same thing over and over again. This is why there is a big difference between Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders on this critical issue. Because a lot of people just don't like Donald Trump. Okay, They don't like him as a person. But guess what? That's not a reason to vote for someone else who's not him, but who holds the same policy ideas, who has the same views on the military. It's, it's, not, it's no reason to switch. Now, you might feel good about yourself that, hey, I voted for Joe Biden, he's not Donald Trump. Okay, and for Bernie people, I think you guys have to at least hold his feet to the fire when it comes to foreign policy. And he has to make statements like Tulsi Gabbard does, all hands on deck. Look, if Tulsi isn't the nominee and Bernie is, I'm going to want Bernie Sanders to absorb all of Tulsi's foreign policy positions. And if he doesn't, he probably isn't going to get my vote. I mean, he might. It depends. If he can be the nominee and hold to the position that uh, regime change war is bad and articulated on a national stage against Donald Trump who once held the position that regime change war was bad it would be great to see and I would pull that lever in a heartbeat for Bernie but right now <clears throat> I think we need to continue to elevate Tulsi Gabbard because she has the best position on this issue there's nobody coming close to her um, the fact that she rebooted a video that was taken down and I've heard that the video might have been taken down because they wanted to highlight it again and show people where Tulsi stood while everybody else was not standing on the the same footing and she wanted to illustrate that and she did brilliantly this woman from Afghanistan actually she's an American citizen an Afghan American woman and she just hit it out of the park you cannot buy a campaign ad with that much power and emotion in it. You have to have real people in it saying real things about real issues that they care about. What's tragic is that when you connect the dots about Bernie and Biden and the establishment, you think to yourself, well, Bernie's not going to stand up. You, you get worried. And so then where do you go? Well, <laughs> if anybody's on the fence, and you want to come over to Team Tulsi, I would just do that. And be respectful. Say, you know what, Bernie Sanders, he's, he's extremely important. He is uh, a person who created a movement, uh, along with all the other people who supported him, obviously. But last time, he was for a bunch of stuff that people thought was a little crazy. Now there are many of us, including former Trump supporters, that are willing to, to go over to the dark side and to support somebody who cares about ordinary Americans. Now you get the same thing though with Tulsi and you get this rock-ribbed foreign policy which says no more regime change wars. That's it. And that's why I think Tulsi is a better candidate. And she's younger and she's thoughtful uh, and look, folks, um, the glass ceiling stuff that appeals to a lot of people, I don't really care about it personally. 
but you're getting <clears throat> you're not getting the old white guy i'm just saying now uh, again i'd vote for an old white guy i'd vote for bernie sanders i did vote for trump okay knowing he was going to be the oldest president and so forth didn't phase me uh, sometimes age and experience are things that go together sometimes they don't <laughs> um, but Tulsi's the whole deal and we could have eight years of peace and prosperity and better health care and better education uh, and you know maybe some things like the surveillance state would be um, turned off or turned down to a reasonable level I don't know. I, I think it's really important that we take a look at the differences between Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders. Doesn't mean if you're a Bernie crat that you abandon Bernie. But you've also got to absorb the reality that Bernie Sanders might be a bit squishy on the foreign policy stuff that I think is just very important. It's just of the utmost importance. Uh, moving forward and you're going to attract more disaffected Trump voters because this is such a big issue and the principle of it too when you start hiring neocons and war hawks to be in your administration see that's what's shocking about what happened with Trump and Biden is echoing John Bolton and Bernie says well if Biden wins good we're all in it together and we're all <laughs> running for the same reasons and yikes I mean third party anyone I mean at that point it's just yeah just jump off the ledge I think you got to take a hard look at Tulsi Tulsi needs more support uh, she's getting into those debates she's doubled her support and she's fundraising like crazy so let's hope that uh, that momentum continues and like people keep telling me Dave wait till she gets into the debates don't don't panic just wait till she starts talking in these debates and yes it's going to be entertaining I like to have Mike Gravel with it there there with her too and Bernie obviously but I think Tulsi can um, do enough damage on her own and she will so all right see you soon everybody